Hi YouTube. I wanted to show you my second graders homeschool curriculum. This is our curriculum for the 2015 through 2016 school year. Right now is November 2015. We started school the middle of August. And so I have two children, a second grader and a fifth grader. And to, together we do Bible together and we do history together and we do literature studies together. The rest of it they do separately. So, um, this whole stack is Bible stuff, but we do not use every single book every single day. But um, they start the day off, well, my second grader starts the day off with her devotional. She Each page, you know, each page is for one day. And then she has a little notebook that she writes about what she learned in the devotion or what or what she felt like God was telling her in the devotion. We use the Bible, of course, for our <laughs> Bible curriculum. But um, <clears throat> this is what we use, the Route 66, a trip through the 66 books of the Bible. It's for grades 2 through 5. And there's activities, arts and crafts, worksheets. But each, um, like they have about one, two, three, four. About four pages cover covers one book of the Bible. So this one's over Job. It gives some information about it, um, some getting ready questions. And these are the main stories that you need to read. <clears throat> and then some things to do. And there are some worksheets, little activities. So we try to cover one book of the Bible a week. Sometimes it takes two weeks. It's okay. We're just taking our time and enjoying it. We have timeline figures. We um, use these for Bible, for history, for science. Anytime we come across a new topic, we'll see if there is a figure to go with it, and we put that in our timeline notebook. We have the Essential Bible Companion. Um, it's a two-page spread, and like each two pages covers one book of the Bible. It gives some good information about it, you know, some uh, artifacts or a map, and tells the purpose of the Bible, timeline down here. It's really good. A homeschool friend of mine actually referred this book and these two, and also the road trip book to me. She referred those to me. And I looked at them, and I really liked them, so I decided to get them too. This one is what the Bible is all about for young explorers. And, like this one here is over Ezra. It tells that Ezra is a one of the books of history. And they have these cartoon figures from chapter 1 all the way to the last chapter of each book. Um, kind of summarizing the whole book, and they have a timeline going up here. Discoveries of the past, which is really neat. Um, usually always have a map and sometimes there's actual pictures in there anyway, we like these books this one here is window on the world and this one is just like a little reference book um, each two, two page spread is over a different country you know, and they give a map as, as to where it's at, some facts about it, the flag. You know, kind of talking about how Christianity, if it is or isn't in that country, and information about it, and how to pray for them. In the back, there is a section over world religions. There's Judaism, Islam, Hinduism, Christianity, Buddhism. different stuff. It's a neat resource to have. So, um, on top of Bible, they also um, work on memorizing a verse in the Bible. We can work on one a week. <coughs> if, if it takes them longer than a week, that's fine. They'll just work on it the next week also. Um, they're active in church and very active in their church youth group. Um, okay, so we do Bible and math 
every day and spelling is about three days a week so we kind of do that every day also but the rest of the subjects like language arts science and health and history those and literature study those are on a loop schedule but the second subject that she does every day is um, math and we use Singapore math this is our first year using Singapore so far we really like it we always used Becca in the past um, but my, my fifth grader will be going back to Abeka next year and just continuing Abeka until she graduates. But as of right now, I plan on using Singapore from now until sixth grade, until my second grader is in sixth grade, and then switching back over to Abeka. That's, that's my plan. But um, we'll just see how this year ends. But uh, this is the Home Instructor's Guide. And then she has a textbook. And they can't write in the textbook. There. Shouldn't write in the textbook. <clears throat> Sorry, my lens cap keeps getting in the way. And then there's the workbook. And this is second grade. And then intensive practice if they need it. So far, my second grader hasn't needed it, but um, you know, she might later on. It's still early in the year. Also for math, she has um, critical thinking workbooks if she wants to do them. Um, she has extra little workbooks to do. Here is the spelling. This is the teacher's book. It looks just like the student's book except for it has the answers. The answers are, are wrote in there. This is the student's. She is on, she just finished lesson 20, so now she'll be on 21. Oh, the spelling's right in staff. Also, they work on poems. They work on a poem until they have it memorized and they pick out a new one. And uh, this is Poems for Memorization from right in staff. And these are actually organized by grade level, like here's grade 2. Then on back here, you know, grade 10. It's like all the grades. And then we like doing Mad Libs. This would be Language Arts. Okay, this is our first year doing Literature Studies. And this was our first Literature Study. It's called The Missing Link Found. And this is a, a, a Christian dinosaur evolution type book. We enjoyed it. Um, and it worked perfectly because at the same time we were doing a dinosaur unit study. So it went along perfectly. I couldn't have planned it any better. Um, but anyway, we, we've already done this one. We read it, and this is the study guide to go with it. Our literature study we're working on right now is Little House in the Big Woods. We have already read all of Laura Ingalls books. This particular book we've probably read three times, but we're reading it again because we've never actually done a study over it. And I have acquired these you know, guides for doing literature studies for that book. So we loved it so much and they wanted me to read it again so I just thought I would just make it a literature study. And these are just little activity books to do. And these are little crafts to make. And then this one here has all of the books that Laura wrote from Little House in the Big Woods to The Happy Golden Years, I think, was the last one that she wrote. Anyway. You know, Unit 2 is over Little House in the Prairie, so the first few pages are The Little House in the Big Woods. And they have questions, things to do, um, just, you know, each, each chapter I mean, each page has uh, some chapter review questions or activities. Anyway, that is the literature study. Um, also for language arts, my fifth grader is practicing typing at typing.com. And my second grader, even though I don't think her fingers are quite big enough to do typing, she is insisting on learning to type. So she is also working on typing.com. 
so we will see how that goes. Um, let me see if there's anything else I forgot about. Oh, writing. Oh, hang on, before I say writing. Literature study, whenever we get done with this one, we are going to do a literature study over the courage of Sarah Noble. Um, for writing, my second grader, I print out themed writing prompts, and actually both my children like to do those, so they work on those. Um, my second grader loves to create stories on her own. I mean, it's she just comes up with some, some stories, and so she writes them down. She really loves it. Um, she's practicing cursive. I just make up my own cursive printables. That's how I taught my fifth grader to, to write cursive, and she has beautiful cursive. Um, so that's what I'm doing with my second grader, making my own cursive sheets, and she's working on a cursive letter a week. Um, also, for grammar, my second grader, I have some printable sheets that teach the parts of speech. So she does those, you know, like nouns and verbs and stuff. And also, she um, does some EnglishGrammar101.com. What it is, it's a, it's a website, and they have, like, you can click, like, the noun section, and they give you sentences. And for the noun section, you have to click on every noun in that sentence. So that's what we do there. Okay, I think I can move on to science now. Okay, so here is my second grader science. This is Patterns of Nature, and it's by Rod and Staff. And I just really like it. Um, my fifth grader used this when she was in second grade, and she really loved it. And we just kept her completed book just because she really enjoyed it. And like this lesson 19 here is over 10 common insects. So here's the insects. And it gives a little Bible verse about the insects, and you read it, and then there are questions. And then, of course, this would be the next lesson. So that is her science. Her health is proper, proper manners and health habits, second grade, also by Rod and Staff. Um, this lesson here is taking care of your room, and answer some questions. Here's a review lesson. On this one, since it doesn't build, like, since each lesson does not build upon previous lessons, she just um, turns to the table of contents and she just reads through here and picks out a lesson that she wants to do next. And then she checks them off as she goes. So she can just do this on her own. You know, she can read and um, she just does this on her own. Okay, I forgot to mention science. Our first thing we did for science for this school year, um, the three of us, we did a dinosaur unit study. We spent weeks. We read a dozen books. We watched movies. We watched videos. We uh, um, went to the Creation Museum. We did lap booking, note booking, some crafts, all kinds of stuff, and really, really learned about dinosaurs. We just had a great time. So that was the first science thing that we did this year. I also forgot to mention for the health, um, we also plan on doing the human body detectives um, whenever we get to it later on in the year. Um, also, when it's necessary, we will go to kidshealth.org. Um, it's a pretty good... Um, resource to have to look up health stuff, you know, like le learning how digestion works or the heart works. It's it's pretty good, and it's actually free, surprisingly. Um, for reading, they read on their own every single day. That is no problem at all. Um, whenever they finish a book, they just put it on my desk, and then I log it down. Okay. Now for the history. Like I said, we're doing history together. And it's Mapping the World with Art by Ellen Johnston McHenry from Ellen McHenry's Basement Workshop. Um, I thought this had a grade on it, an age range. Anyway, um, I really like this, the contents it has. Um, 
reading assignments, map drawings, activity sections. I really like this. The very earliest maps here is lesson one. There are pictures of some maps. Like each lesson is front and back. Okay, so here's lesson two, front and back. And then each lesson, like the very first lesson, was over maps, right? So the first, which it also talks about Mesopotamia. So the first drawing lesson is to draw Mesopotamia. Which Mesopotamia means between the rivers. And um, it's also modern day Iraq. So they uh, so they've actually have drawn this. And it gives step by step instructions on how to draw it. And the next lesson will be drawing the Nile River. There are activities to go with it. So the first lesson was over maps. And we had to label um, Babylon. So the first option for an activity to do would be to make an edible Babylonian clay map. And it kind of gives them uh, Babylon symbols. Babylon symbols. <laughs> so it's pretty neat. And if you didn't want to do that, then you have a couple other options. You can make a Polynesian map. And then at the end of the book, you will have created an actual map. Um, I don't know if you can see these pictures or not. But um, at the end of the book, the child will have created their very own map. And it's really neat. And there's 30 lessons, so if you do one a week, it should take you the whole school year, basically. And I know my uh, second grader, she's in second grade, but this is um, Old World History and Geography by Becca. It's for fifth grade. But since we are doing history together, um, we're using this as a supplement. So the first lesson talks about Mesopotamia in this book over here. And this one here, the first chapter, it, men it mentions Mesopotamia. So I go to that chapter and then we read about what Becca says about Mesopotamia. So we try to link these two together. And like, if you had looked on the second map drawing, it was drawing the Nile River. Well, over here in Chapter 2, it talks about the Nile River. Anyways, this works very well. Um, I love, love Abeka's history. I just, we just really like it. So, we did not, not want to use this. Let's see. Looking at my notebook over here, seeing if there's anything I forgot to mention. I don't see anything, but I'm probably there is though. Um, from time to time, from time to time, we do um, easy peasy. It's like a complete curriculum school, and you can. Uh, it's at allinonehomeschool.com. I like for my children to do like the language arts section over there, writing and reading. Uh, they have a lot of poetry to work on for my fifth graders level anyway. Anyway, we like that. And that's what, I guess that's all. <laughs> anyway, if you have any questions, just ask in the comments below and I will try to answer.